Mm. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Oh my goodness, I, I can't believe it. I just, it's, it's 465 for gas. It was just 420, 419 uh, two days ago. I guess we're getting close to Memorial Weekend because you know it always goes up. It always goes up Memorial Weekend. Yeah. Anyway, I can't believe it. In fact, I love it. I absolutely positively love it. The schedule's released yesterday. And as you start looking through, you know, the web of what's going on and so on, Vegas. Vegas already has the Cowboys a two and a half point underdog at home against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Two and a half point underdogs at home. Because see, here's the thing. You're given three points for being the home team. If you're the home team, they look at you and say, you should be three points favorites because you're sleeping in your own bed. You got your own locker room. You know, strange things happen when you're the road team. You know, sometimes your headset's cut out. Or maybe the locker rooms, you know, the uh, the water's all cold. You know, because you don't have hot water in the showers. Maybe the uh, whirlpool's not working and so forth, right? Maybe the walls are painted pink, you know? It's harder on the road. With that being said, the Dallas Cowboys are a two and a half point underdog <clears throat> against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm actually loving this. The reason being, and I know that sounds crazy, I would rather be the underdog in the people that aren't under the microscope. Because if you listen to Talking Heads, for the most part, they're gonna tell you the Cowboys, they stink, they're terrible. They're not gonna be a good team. That's usually when the Cowboys do the best. When the Cowboys are expected to be a really good team, for whatever reason, we always disappoint. And it may not just be the Cowboys. It may be just that that's the way it feels because I'm a Cowboy fan. Because we go through and the expectations are always there as a Cowboy fan. But I remember when we were talking about the Cowboys could be the first home team to host a Super Bowl. You remember that? And the Cowboys, they fell flat on their face. And that was the beginning of the Jason Garrett era. I didn't say era. I said error. Because I think that was a mistake. The Cowboys fell on their face with Jason Garrett as the offensive coordinator. He was part of the stank that was there. 2014, catch no catch. They looked at us and they said, oh, man, the Cowboys, they were so close to the NFC Championship game. They're a great team. They should be in the Super Bowl. 4-12 and 12, fell on our face. 2015, Tony Romo gets hurt preseason. Cowboys season's done. 13-3. and three. The next year, Cowboys, one of the best-built teams in football. Nine and seven missed the playoffs. You see the pattern here? So for them to go through and say, ugh, Cowboys, their ass, actually gives me a little bit of confidence. Gives me a bit of hope. Makes me feel a whole lot better. Maybe I'm crazy. But that's the way I kind of feel about it. Now, a couple of things along with this. I, I got to go to uh, Woodcrafters. I need some... Uh, oak color wood filler for the cabinets. Uh, it used to be I could buy that at Home Depot, but because of the pandemic, they don't have a lot of the colors that they used to have anymore. Basically, they got white, they got natural, and that's about it. And I'm hoping Woodcrafters has my oak, natural oak. Anyway, a couple of things. They think that the Cowboys are going to be so bad. How bad do they think they're going to be? They're already saying, well, Mike McCarthy be on the hot seat by week number nine, the bye week. Could he be fired that weekend? Clearly, the expectations are low. 
Now, I dare say that's always a possibility, but to say that he's going to be on the hot seat week number nine, I got to say that Mike McCarthy is already on the hot seat. Mike McCarthy was on the hot seat after we lost in the playoffs to the 49ers. Now, I don't see where the seat got any cooler. That seat is red hot for Mike McCarthy. And we'll find out if he rises to the occasion or falters. Now, I will say this much. When I look at the schedule, the Cowboys may come out of the gate slow. They may because they end up having four teams that were playoff teams this past year in the first six games. We already know that they're a road underdog, excuse me, a home underdog against Tampa Bay. And surely, unless they win that game against Tampa Bay, they're going to be an underdog probably against Cincinnati. Just say, I mean, let's, let's be real here. Back to the Tom Brady one. Tom Terrific. The Dallas Cowboys, and this is beyond Dak Prescott and D-Law and all of them. The Dallas Cowboys have never beaten Tom Brady. Tom Brady has never lost to the Dallas Cowboys. It came close last year. They had a few things that went their way. Some calls that weren't made that should have been for the Cowboys and some ones that were made against the Cowboys that shouldn't have been. But be that as it may, this is the Cowboys' last chance for romance tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Cowboys' last chance, possibly, to beat Tom Brady unless it's in the playoffs. It's crazy that the Cowboys, although they haven't played them that many times, have never gotten a victory against Tom Brady. It's crazy. A guy that's been around for 20-some years. You got to get one in there. And so maybe the Cowboys shock the world and get Tom terrific and kick that ass. So, that's where we are. We got the schedule. We got four playoff teams in the first six games, but after that, we got the Lions and the Bears. I mean, how about this? If the Cowboys, if the Cowboys start out, worst case, say three and three. Cowboys start out three and three. Again, New England, Cincinnati, um, the Giants. God, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, we got the Eagles. I thought I committed it to memory. Who am I missing on the playoff teams? It's not Green Bay yet. Damn. Who am I missing? In the Okay, forgive me. Yeah, the Cowboys, regardless of whoever it is, I forgot the other two games. I, I, it, it's on the tip, tip of my tongue. If the Cowboys start off 500, 3 and 3, with the teams that they have to face, we know we got the Eagles, we got Cincinnati, we got Tampa, we've got the Giants in there. That's Washington. That's Washington, and I'm missing one other one. If we start off, just hypothetically, three and three, which doesn't sound good, 500. Then we've got the Lions and the Bears. Two games, if you have playoffs aspirations, you should win. So if we go five and three, the first eight of the games, that's not bad, guys. That would actually be pretty, pretty good. And then you're looking at it from that point, You've got Green Bay and Tennessee are the next biggest games that you have. You've got other teams that you should be able to beat, like the Vikings, like the Texans, like the Jaguars, like the Colts, like Washington, like the Eagles, and like the Giants again. I think 11-6. and six. That's what I think. And so, if by week nine... The bye week, the 
the Cowboys are five and three. I don't know that Mike McCarthy gets fired there. Sorry. I just don't. I, I just don't see that happening. I see the Cowboys going through knowing that the second half of the season is a lot softer. And if you get to five and three, Mike McCarthy's job is safe for the rest of the year. It just is. So, there you go, guys. I'm Mark Holmes, and hope you guys tune in later on. We'll be here with the law. Law Nation, we'll be doing a live stream together. And then tonight, we'll be doing our regular Friday night live stream. I'll see you guys then. Peace.